everybody, this is Randy with Carchaeology, and today I'm going to start the process of cleaning up the Honda CT110. But first, let me tell you the story about this particular bike. This little red Honda is a 1986 CT110, a Trail 110. Now, the Honda trail bikes like this um, have had a very long life. In fact, they've been revived by Honda recently, and there's a fairly new or a brand new model uh, that's a variant of this exact bike that you can buy today. Um, but they started out with them um, early on. I, I'll have to do the research as far as particular date, but uh, once they got up into the 80s, they kind of petered out here in the U.S., uh, this would have been one of the last models that they sold here in the U.S. The 110, I think, is the biggest that they ever made this particular bike. Um, and it's uh, it's a well-loved and well-collected bike. These have started to bring some pretty serious money if they're in really nice condition. And a lot of them have been ridden a lot because they're known to be extremely durable, very easy to ride bikes, and they get used a lot by campers and RVers. You can fold the handlebars, uh, turn the handlebars flat so that you can put it on the back of your truck or the back of your RV. Uh, and they're a very versatile, very easy to ride little motorcycle. So this particular example I got from a good friend of ours uh, that was moving out of state. And he had gotten the bike from his, uh, from his uncle, I believe. Uh, and his uncle was a uh, construction worker. He was a foreman on a big job back in 86 where they were building in a hospital, I think it was, or some sort of a real large uh, construction project. And the company that he was working for bought this bike for him to ride around on the job site. And then after the building was done, um, the company gave him the bike uh, just as a thank you for his efforts in making that happen. And the bike is a, a really original bike. In fact, it's got extremely low miles on it. It shows uh, 519 miles here on the odometer and uh and it's really just sat for a long time in a barn uh it was sold new at honda of pomona you can see the uh the dealership tag right there in fact you can see the remnants of the uh, original dealer license plate the little plastic plate on the back of it uh, and while it was titled when it was new, uh, the plates never went onto the bike. So this bike has really never seen the road. Uh, it's obviously seen 500 miles of running around a construction site and maybe around my friend's uncle's ranch, um, but that's about it. So my plan with this bike is preservation rather than restoration. It's really in nice shape. It's just very dirty, uh, very dusty from sitting. Uh, my son and I did get this running at one point, so I'll be getting it running again. Um, but more than anything, I want to see how much I can transform this bike from the dusty jewel that you see here right now into hopefully a showroom worthy bike. Uh, so in any case, uh, follow along on the cleanup process of this little Trail 110 and watch it really come to life. So first steps first, I need to dust this thing off and see really what I'm dealing with. Um, and so I've got just a little wipe here to kind of dust most of the, the muck off of it. Now I will admit that I did polish this fender uh, when it first came here to the lab a while ago. So uh, this, this particular part is kind of cheating, but uh, as you can see, it's really gonna shine up nice. Now, granted, it's a little wet using this handy wipe here to wipe it down. Um, and I will have to get in there and do some polishing. And there's certain areas like down in the corners here where I really haven't gotten um, with the detail brushes and wax and that sort of thing. Um, but the one thing about little motorcycles or all motorcycles is that everything is exposed. And so it's, uh, while it's obviously smaller than a car, um, you've got to spend a whole lot of time really getting into all the nitty gritty details here. Uh, getting all the muck out of here is going to be really fun. You're going to see a nice transformation there. Um, 
and uh, it's going to make a massive difference in the overall appearance of the bike. And really, you need to get absolutely everywhere on a motorcycle because absolutely everywhere is exposed. There's nothing to hide. You can't close a trunk lid or an engine lid uh, on this little bike and hide all of this. So getting in here with some uh, good degreaser, some small brushes and little picks and things like that, uh, be able to get that uh, engine looking spectacular uh, and really kind of clean up the whole thing. Getting that chrome to shine is also going to make a massive, massive difference when it comes to the overall look of this bike. That's going to look pretty darn nice. Now, this bike does still have the original Yokohama tires on it. They are kind of badly cracked along here, so it's not particularly safe. But since I'm just preserving this bike at this particular moment, uh, and the fact that it does have real low miles on it, I think I'm going to leave these original tires on the bike. Um, unless I could find the exact tire uh, for the bike, uh, in which case that might be fun to do. Um, but... You know, they're only original ones, and whoever buys this uh, might be interested in it as a pure survivor, and original tires would be a fairly rare thing, I would think. So I've put a little uh, Meguiar's car cleaner wax. Where the heck did I put this here? Uh, uh, there you go, professional cleaner wax. It's a number six, uh, and it's... Uh, it's kind of a one-step deal that allows you to, to sort of polish and protect at the same time. And I have gone over this once before in the past, uh, but you can see, and just hitting it a few times, you can see some color coming off on the rag. So you know that's oxidization that's uh, leaving the finish. Um, and it takes a little time to get down into the cracks and details here. Uh, you can use a toothpick or a little bamboo skewer uh, along with the cloth to get down in there, get stuff out of the corners. Um, and you just got to do your best, take your time. The more you get into those cracks and corners, the better this is going to look. Don't just focus on the open planes. That's the easy stuff. But the eye is always drawn to those nitty gritty details. So if I can get down in here and get some of that dust and stuff out of the corner, it'll really look spectacular. But so far, man, it's looking good. That shine is really nice. So you can see there's all sorts of, uh, of crap that's kind of caught in here, stuff that's gotten up inside of this, leaves and things like that. Um, gonna have to try to get that stuff out of there if I can. Uh, getting a little brush in there is a good place to start. Again, the little uh, bamboo skewers can be good to get into places that the brush can't get. Uh, and then I wanna hit this with a little bit of degreaser, let it set in. Out of degreaser, I have to find some more of that. Ah, that's planning. Okay, I'm out of degreaser, but I'll uh, do a little carb cleaner here and try to soften up that muck. And then I'll get in here with a soft brush and try to get some of that out of there. definitely going to come. Right now I'm just kind of smearing it around, but uh, get in here a little more. Whoa, I'm seeing some paint come off here. Maybe the, this uh, carb cleaner is not the best plan. I'm really screwing this up, unfortunately. Getting a little paint to come off of that, that is a no-no. So, <laughs> lesson to learn, always use the right stuff. Gonna let that dry up real good and hopefully I didn't screw it up too bad. All right, so now I'm scrubbing it with uh, a little more of a soapy cleaner with a mild degreaser in it. Obviously that carb cleaner was a really poor choice and I'm a complete idiot for trying that without thinking it, but I'm not one to try to make myself look like any more than I am here on YouTube because 
everybody screws up and everybody needs to learn from their mistakes. But as you can see, this is really going to clean up super nice. Now I'm mega bummed that I screwed up the paint right there. I might just maybe try to touch that up because I know that's going to absolutely bug the living crap out of me um, because it's going to point out my failures as a human being. And I will have to climb the highest mountain and uh, give penance to the high gurus of motorcycle them for being an idiot on that. But wow, that is looking significantly better. Now I can get in here with a little bit of wax. I can really start to polish some of this stuff. Damn, that's really bugging me. Uh, get up here, start doing the fork pieces. Um, and, you know, if you take your time, you can remove some pieces to make it a little bit easier. Like the reflectors on these, these babies just spin right off. So getting this off of here um, will allow much better access around this piece. In fact, I can take that off there and polish this all beautifully, clean this piece up and put it back and it'll really look fresh and beautiful. So I think I'm gonna do that next and try to ignore my boo-boo. Damn. So here you can see that this is paint that's never been exposed because it's been underneath that reflector. And this obviously is the paint that has been exposed. So even though this thing has been in a garage for darn near its whole life, with exception of maybe the first year of use uh, out at the construction site, uh, there's a fair bit of dirt and, um, and some uh, deterioration of that paint. Um, fortunately, factory paint is usually pretty strong stuff on, uh, on things of this era. Uh, maybe it doesn't stand up to card cleaner. Um, but it'll clean up really good uh, with some good wax. And you can see just how well that's going to shine. I got to get in here and polish this chrome as well. Um, but man, just quick first wipe with a little bit of polish there. And it is looking really quite nice. I can still kind of see a little bit of a shadow here of where that reflector was. So that tells me that there might still be a little bit of dirt in that paint. So the more I work it, the cleaner it'll be. And my goal is to try to make it as bright and perfect as the paint that's not been touched. But uh, already cleaning up good. Well, this was a surprise. <laughs> I'm detailing and detailing and cleaning up the fender here and I look down on my knee and this little fella is crawling up my leg. I should probably stop him before he gets uh, up here to my head. Right? What are you doing, buddy? All right. All right. That's a little too close. <laughs> you gotta go. All right. See ya. Thanks for the visit but I don't need the help. So another tip to keep in mind is to work your way down. Start at the top and start detailing and then work your way down to the dirty bits. Gravity is a thing. Stuff starts working its way down. Whatever you're doing up here with chemicals is gonna drip down below and mess up your work. Um, so right now I've, I've sprayed the uh, brake drum here with the uh, a little bit of cleaner. I let it sit for a bit and I'm going to give it a little brush. And this is a soft bristled uh, plastic brush. Definitely don't use metal. We'll scratch that finish like crazy. Um, and you got to spend some time here. I mean, there's a lot of little nooks and crannies with the spokes. The inside part of the hub is a real pain in the butt to get to. Um, if you've got to remove some pieces to get in there to clean, you can certainly do that. Uh, I'm going to see how clean I can get it without pulling the brake all apart. But uh, let's see here. I'll give this a wipe down and we'll see how nice that's going to shine. Yeah, I'd say that's pretty good. Compare that to the back over here, which is pretty gnarly. And we'll get around front and make that all look super clean. I also spend a lot of time down here around the axle nuts, any sort of hardware, wherever wherever that goes on, you want to clean really good. You know, the eye gets drawn to the dirt in the tiniest little corners, and the better you can make those look, the better the overall vision is going to be. You can already see a transformation here, that front fender and the fork 
all of that's really starting to look fantastic. I got a long way to go back here, but uh, slowly but surely, we'll get from one end to the other. And definitely a significant difference here, cleaning up that front hub and coming up the fork here. The fender's looking fantastic. I've cleaned this shock boot here on this side. Uh, this side of the fork leg here around the headlight I've cleaned up. Uh, cleaned up the reflector, the rubber back behind it. The chrome is shining bright. Got back here behind the neck and have started that cleaning there. Um, and and already it's really looking spectacular. Now, I'm not going to sit out here and bore you guys for hours on end with every little infinite uh, detailing bit. Uh, so maybe I'll do a time lapse as I get here and do different stuff or focus on more uh, particular details as I get to them. But I think I'm going to call it a day for now. I just wanted to come out in the lab, do a little work on something. And the old trail 110 seemed to be a perfect choice. So devil's in the details on anything and especially on a motorcycle. And so I'm going to try to get the devil out of this one. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. And uh, if you've got any cleaning tips, do's and don'ts, like don't use frickin' carb cleaner on paint, uh, definitely post it in the comments below. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye-bye.